All right, well, since so many of you saw my snow removal video and said, hey, you need tire chains, I even asked, hey, anybody know uh, good tire chains? A lot of suggestions. But one in particular, somebody told me, hey, you got a shop, why not just make them yourself? And that's exactly what we're going to do today. I ran to Harbor Freight, bought a bunch of chain, bought a bunch of other stuff, and we're gonna make some tire chains. Did you know that uh, only 2% of the people that view my videos are subscribed? Yeah, so that leaves a whopping 98% of you aren't subscribed. If you fall into that 98%, do me a favor, subscribe. So I picked up some connectors, uh, picked up some bungees, and two buckets of chain. And I understand that Harbor Freight chain probably isn't the best quality chain, but that being said, I'm not doing anything super industrial with it, just my driveway. Total cost I have invested right here is $107, and that beats the heck out of a $500 pair of chains for the tire. Who knows, I might fail, it might not work, and I might have to buy a set anyway, but at least we're gonna give it a try. I've already done some math and figured out that the circle we're gonna need here is gonna be about eight feet. I'm gonna pull eight foot of chain out, we're gonna cut it, and I guess we'll get started. I know it looks kind of crude, but I think that's about what we want. Eight foot seems to be somewhat good. I mean, obviously, it's gonna be a little uh, difficult to make it a perfect circle with only two hands. Theodore's obviously helping me out a little bit. But I think I'll cut the same thing for the other side. That way we can start making our ladder. Now, I have a lot of tools. You know, I got torches and everything like that. I could just cut these, bend it open with the torch, and then put it back together and weld it. But I kind of want to make these as easy as DIY as possible. I know a lot of people have welders but don't have torches. So, we're not going to we're not going to use the torches and we'll see how it goes. We're just going to use a grinder and the welder for the entire project. Hopefully that's all you need to make these yourself. I am gonna count the links real fast. That way I know these circles are gonna be the exact same size on both sides. All right, so 76 links and the one we already cut. And I'm just gonna double check that with this one. 76 links in this one as well. That means we're good to cut on this. So now we have our two uh, I guess you could call them vertical, vertical uh, ladder sections. I don't know, I'm gonna lay them out next to each other. Well, we need to get a measurement around the tire. That's gonna be pretty important. So what I'm just trying to do here is get a rough measurement, about 28 inches. Man, if I make these whole things and they don't work, it's gonna be pretty disappointing. I guess I can make them bigger. That would make them just go down more. And then I have that link. I could just leave extra on. Let's do that. 30 should be plenty. So now we need 30 inches per lateral, the ones that go across here. So we've got our loop cut here, and now we need 30 inches cut across. That's eight foot. If we did one every foot, it'd be kind of cool, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some of that chain cut 30 inches and I'll get eight of them. We'll lay the two ladders out next to each other so they get a good idea of how they're gonna ride. All right, 24 links per ladder rung. We're gonna save these and I'll show you why in a little bit. All right, that's all eight cut. Theodore, get off the truck. 
Get off the truck. You're lucky this truck isn't painted yet. Get out of there. Shoo. Shoo. Go on. Get off the truck. All right, like I was saying, all eight are cut. So we'll lay out the verticals and then we'll lay the horizontals a foot apart. Wonder if I should zip tie these so they, are, they stay where they're supposed to be. Let me do that. Why am I still wearing these? I can barely see out of them. They're super dirty. What am I doing with my life? Man, hopefully my math is right. Get all the way to the end and not have your math be right. Hopefully we're not cutting this entire thing apart after it's all welded. And hopefully I counted right and I have three links on this side. Oh, you guys hear the air compressor? How much quieter it is? How did I end up with four links on that side? One, two, three, four. Okay. I do have four links on that side. Two. We got four extra links down here for adjustment. And I picked these up to connect them together. So you unscrew these. Put the chain in. Like so. We'll put the other side in. And then screw it back together. So everything that's in front of you was purchased at Harbor Freight, like I was saying. Um, again, I know it's not the highest quality, but it should last. For what I do with it, at least. I mean, they're not looking too bad so far. They look like ladder chains. I think the zip tie should be strong enough that we should be able to drape it over the tire to see what it looks like. Well, apparently I forgot to hit record, but they're mostly on there. They are pretty sloppy right now because I don't have anything tightened up. But essentially, that is what they'll look like. Kind of. They'll look a little better. Once they're all even, they won't look so bad. I think that'll do. Well, it is dinner time, so this project is going to be continued tomorrow. All I have left to do on this side is basically weld it all together and uh, put it on to make sure everything works. I might cut a couple of the chains out of the ladders. It's a little sloppy, so I might cut like six inches out which is a shame because that's a lot of wasted chain. But we'll figure that out tomorrow. See you guys then. All right, so dinner's over. Uh, and what I've done is I've taken the chains back off the tractor, snipped all the zip strips, and I've actually moved each ladder in one chain. So now you can see I've got a lot more adjustment over here. Before I only had four links. Now I've got one, two, now I've got 11 links of adjustment there, which will put it a little bit further away. So rung one, and rung eight are not right next to each other. There'll be like a six, eight inch gap. We're gonna throw them back on the tractor and uh, see if it looks any better. And we might even break out the old bungee cords. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I also spun the ladders a little bit. So to take some of that slack out. So these uh, ladders got some twist in them now, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's tough to tough to control the spin when you've got uh, zip ties holding it all together. So you're kind of seeing these now, and the chain actually falls inside the tread here. So we're gonna have to figure something out. Maybe I run a chain across, or maybe chains, you know, in here somehow, from this link to this link on both sides. That'll hold it up. I think we're gonna have to do that. Because I don't think the chain sitting in the treads is going to make much of a difference with traction. It needs to sit outside the tread, you know, up here, like that, to get any traction. And I assume you could line it up like that, but as soon as you start moving and start going back and forth and back and forth, it'll naturally find its way into the tread. And I think if I only ran one chain down the center, it would just wear that chain out lickety-split. So I got some thinking I got to do. Maybe I do every other one. So this side will be on this side. This next one will be over here. Next one will be over here. And so on and so forth. So I still have like five links in the back to adjust. So once this thing is ready to rock and roll, the back can still be tightened up, which will help the, uh, which will help the bungees something like that. I've seen worse. 
Far from professional, but certainly not unacceptable. That is for sure. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna do one here, the next one over here, next one over here, next one over there, so on and so forth. And that'll get these links up on top of these treads. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is cut some more chain. I'm gonna cut those sections that are gonna run parallel to the vertical section of chain, I guess you could say. I'm gonna make it eight links because we're gonna do use, we're gonna use two half links to weld it together and that'll be, uh, that'll create nine. I'm gonna get all those cut and then when I'm back, we well, should have it all laid out. It's getting kind of late, so I don't think I'm gonna get in any welding tonight, but we'll at least get this one laid out the way it needs to be so we can start welding right away tomorrow. So I think we have the final design. I think that's it. I think it'll look nice. I think it'll work well. I mean, it looks like it's going to work well. So as you can see, I put these little crossbars. That'll hopefully raise these rungs up onto the tread. It is getting late though, so uh, I think that's all we're gonna do for today is have that set up and tomorrow we'll come in here and do some welding. I'm saving all my half links because that is how I'm gonna weld everything. If you don't have access to a welder, you can still build this. It's gonna cost you a little bit more money. Everywhere that I'm gonna put a weld, you would just grab one of these and connect everything with this. You don't necessarily need a welder. I think a pack of these, three of them was like three bucks, so a dollar a piece. And by this design, you would need, let's see how many you would need. One, you would need like 32 of them. So if you don't have a welder, it would add about $32 per side, $64 total to this project. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I'm excited. I think it's gonna make a big difference. You know what I've decided is before bed, I really, I really can't go to bed without trying to put them on there because I'll just be, I'll be sitting up in bed all night wondering, is this gonna work? Let's just, let's find out quick. What these little crossbars should also accomplish is keeping it fairly straight on the tire. It's just tough when it's not welded because zip ties wanna, wanna move. All right, that side looks pretty decent. Oh, man. I just broke a zip tie. Oh, there goes another zip tie. All right, so bungee cords, fun fact of the day, bungee cords are stronger than zip ties. But because I don't know how to learn a lesson, we're gonna try again. Okay, they're all on. Doesn't look pretty, but boy, I'm happier how these chains are sitting up on top of the tread now instead of falling in between. And I'll give you a closer look. So you can see here, before this chain was running just right in that groove right there. And now with these being on top, not only am I getting on top of the tread here, it's also causing it to, to ride over top. Obviously, when I drive over top of these, they're gonna be a lot more square to the tire than they are for me just dragging them over top. But I mean, it looks pretty good. It really doesn't look that bad at all. I'm pretty darn excited. So now, now I'm going to bed. What I'm gonna do is cut all these zip ties, get everything lined up really nice and straight. Uh, I do not like welding on my concrete floor because it can mess up the floor, however, I don't have a table big enough to set this entire thing on nicely, get it tacked, and then fully weld it. So what I'm going to do is lay it out. I'm gonna tack it down here, and then we'll go over to my workbench where I can stand up and weld you know, a little bit at a time. So snip, snip, line everything up, 
I did put twists in these originally, the ladders. Uh, I didn't like what that did to the vertical runs because it, it wanted to twist them. So we're gonna make everything nice and square. So this is the welder I use. It's an ESAB, or ESAB, however you want to say it, McMaster 250. I'm guessing it's about 20, 25 years old, but it still works great. So for those of you that haven't seen any of my videos before, and this is the first one you're coming to, I am not a master welder. I don't claim to be one. I've never welded chain before, but I have a welder. Chain is metal, and uh, we're going to get after it. now. All those half links that we cut earlier, that is what we're going to use to connect the ladders to the uh, rungs or the whatever you, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, again, I've never done this before. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try our hardest. I don't even know if we're going to run a good ground through this. I think this is zinc plated and you're probably supposed to be wearing some sort of respirator. I know you are with galvanized. I don't know if galvanized is zinc. I'm sure everybody in the comments is going to tell me, so I'll just wait for that. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, let's try that again. Ow! Hot, hot. Do not touch hot. Huh, that didn't work very well. It's probably because it's got zinc plating on it. I don't know how to fix that. I'm gonna have to get the old Googles. How to weld zinc plated chain. All right, well, I think I got the welding issue figured out. Uh, I think it's the zinc plating, zinc coating, whatever it is. So I took this scrap of chain right here Took it over to the wire wheel. I wire wheeled off right here, and I wire wheeled off down there for a ground. And you can see it welded just fine. So, what I'm gonna do is basically anywhere I'm gonna weld, take it over to the wire wheel and just wire wheel it quick. appears to be connected. It appears to be connected as well. All right, first tack is done. All right, well, it's going. I mean, that certainly is better than what it was. Not at all working, so... All right, so now that all of the ladders or the rungs are on the vertical pieces, I think I'm gonna try to take it over to my table and do it on there because oh, because my back hurt. Uh, that was the important part to make sure that everything was nice and even and square and not tangled. So now that we go up, all we have to do is put those little cross sections in and do full welds on all of them. My back is killing me from being on the ground. So this little table right here, a uh, little filthy, but it should do. 
I think we're going to try to make this an impromptu welding table. It is steel, albeit not very heavy gauge steel. However, it is very dirty. I have a one of these soft, I don't know what you call them, soft something or others. I don't know. They take dirt and grime off. Try to grind some of this down. That way it's uh, become some sort of welding table and that way I don't have to mess with the ground all the time. I can just hook the ground to the table. That should be uh, plenty for what I need. That might work. A couple bungee cords. Well, it's certainly on there. Will it weld is the real question. Hook my ground up here. All right, here's the real question. Will it weld? It will weld. This is good news. Impromptu welding table, success. The trick is to just hold your breath. I don't think my respirator fits on underneath my mask. Let's test it. Nope, respirator. Oh, I guess I could. I guess I can make it fit. Let's let's try. Guess we'll try to be safe because you know what? There's gonna be 40, 50 comments. Hey, you're gonna get sick. If you're wondering why it's so dirty, it's because I undercoat with it. All right, let's see if the helmet fits over it. Oh boy. I mean, it's not great, but it works, I guess. This is what keeps me from getting really sick. Let's try it. Good thing I have an auto darkening mask because if I didn't, this would be impossible. I think I need more speed. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, now we're in business. That looks way better. Sounds better too, huh? I'd say so. Ooh, that might be too fast. Let's try this side. I think we got it somewhat figured out now, boys. I think we got it figured out. Yeah, all right. Now that looks great. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but now what I gotta do is basically dump the whole thing and do the same thing on the opposite side because the opposite side is the side I started on and that's only tack welded. I'm sure that's going to be super tangled. All right, I'm going to take this down and just untangle it. It's it's a mess. I should have never did that that way. Probably let it cool off for 15, 20 minutes before I start grabbing random links. Uh, I'm going to finish welding this, all these links like I just did on the other side. And then what I'll do next is these, uh, these ladder bars, or I, I keep calling everything a ladder bar. I, I don't really know what they're called. The vertical pieces that run in between the rungs, we'll get those welded in. Yeah, but I'm gonna let it cool off and then we'll pick back up wherever. So I flipped the chain over and I'm about to start on the other side. I just finished, you know, welding the bottom side of this now and I'm gonna finish welding the top it does have tacks on it you can see those but I want to finish welding them and I'm gonna to try to kill two birds with one stone while I've got it on this side I want to start welding in these uh, runners that go from chain to chain
like I did when I was test fitting. There it is. Chains are on, good as I'm gonna get for now. I'm happy with it. There is a little bit of a bigger gap here than I'd like, but I think what will happen is I start uh, driving and what have you, they'll kind of even out. I can feel it riding on the chain making marks in my concrete. Must be working. Now I just gotta make a whole nother one, which sounds exhausting, but at least one of them's done. I'm halfway there. Halfway is better than no way. All right, I'm gonna make the second one. I'll be back, we'll throw them both on. Hopefully there's some snow we can test it on. There isn't any out there now. I just got uh, five feet about two weeks ago. It's been 55 degrees and raining for two weeks. Well, I finished cutting all the chain for the second one. I had to go get another bucket. Unfortunately, I was like five feet short, which sucks. But I guess that just means I have more chain to tie stuff down on the trailer. So I got the second one laid out. I think I'm gonna skip the grinding of the zinc plating off on this one just to speed things up. And I'm gonna try to weld it all at once up on the bench. Unlike the last one where I tacked it on the ground then brought it to the bench. I'm just going to try to do the whole thing on the bench all at once. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to throw you guys in a time lapse. Well, there you have it. Both sets are done. I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. It definitely went way faster on the second set, having put the whole thing together on the bench rather than tack it on the floor and then bring it up to the bench and do it a million times. So I just did the whole thing on the bench like you guys saw in the time lapse, and it worked great. They are ready to go on the tractor. So I'm gonna get that done, and once I'm done with that, we'll take a look how they look on the tractor and your fun fact of the day. It's raining outside. And this is all supposed to turn to ice. And then we're supposed to get like four to six inches of snow tomorrow. So, might be the perfect opportunity to test it out. Well, they're done. They're on there. And they don't look terrible. Not bad for homemade. There's that big gap I was talking about there. That's where the uh, chain joins. You see the link right there. I assume as I drive these around, they're gonna loosen up and find where they wanna be naturally. So that actually might close up a little bit as I use it. Other sides on here as well. That side's just got the big gap down there. So I think they're going to work well. I tried to get my old ATV chains on the front of the tires, but just wouldn't happen. So we're not gonna have much steering. 
but we're going to have all the pushing power in the world. So I have a total of $180 invested into this project. That's just with raw materials. Obviously, I'm not counting my wire. I'm not counting my grinding disc. Uh, but $180 in chain got me the rear tire chains for this tractor. Now, I did look them up online. They range anywhere from $400 to $1,000. Obviously, the $1,000 one being much higher quality chain and uh, a better pattern. I understand that these $180 chains aren't gonna be the best. I get that. They are $180 chains. I understand that it is not a hardened chain. It will wear down over time. I get that. You don't need to leave a comment below saying, that's gonna wear out after one year. It's not. It's not gonna wear out after one year. It's gonna last three or four years for sure. It's gonna last me plenty long. It's gonna be better than nothing, that is for sure. And I saved myself a ton of money. Unfortunately, there is no snow outside right now. I did uh, tell you though, it is supposed to snow tomorrow. So we might have the opportunity to test them out tomorrow. I guess that depends if the weatherman's right or not. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you've made it this far, hit that subscribe button. Did you know that uh, only 2% of the people that view my videos are subscribed? Yeah, so that leaves a whopping 98% of you aren't subscribed. If you fall into that 98%, do me a favor, subscribe. It would really help me out. I'd really appreciate it. And if you like this video in specific, make sure you hit that like button. And if you are subscribed, you are gonna be seeing in the next couple days, hopefully, me using these tire chains and us testing to see if they really do make a difference. If you guys have any questions on how exactly I built them, what measurements I used, I'll, I'll let you know. I'm not gonna, it's no secret. So if you have a Kubota 4701 and you wanna make them, drop a comment. I'll give you all the chain counts or whatever you wanna call them. But until the next video, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.